Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically defensive safety slash cornerback, I guess, Minka Fitzpatrick of Alabama. Uh, we're going to look at his uh, production data to give some ideas in terms of where where's his better fit. Is his better fit at free safety? Is his better fit at cornerback? Uh, and just go into a little bit of what Mika Fitzpatrick could be from a, from a projection uh, standpoint. Now, if you're new to the channel, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So if you're not very familiar with certain terms or things that I'm talking about, you can just go there to get some more information about um, what I'm talking about. But the only term that you really need to know for this video is defensive market share data, which is essentially this. You take an individual defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total statistic. So, for example, if a safety has 50 solo tackles on a team that has 500 solo tackles and that safety had 10% solo tackle market share. But what you do with that number is you take that number, that performance, and you compare it to every single defensive safety performance since the 1989 uh, NFL draft class. And then, boom, you have a way of seeing where guys compare uh, and not only that, you get to see where all the multiple All-Pro players compared, where the multiple Pro Bowl players compared, and of course, where some of the long-term starters compared when it came to the overall data. Um, so it's a very good resource to see, okay, this is how this guy produced. Did he produce like an All-Pro player? Did he produce like a Pro Bowl player? So on and so forth. Uh, to kind of give you that double check, if you will, uh, of, of how to actually project a guy like that. Uh, and we're going to be looking at a lot of different things when it comes to Mika Fitzpatrick. We're going to be looking at him compared to free safety, strong safeties, and of course cornerbacks to finish it off. And just give a little bit of a tidbit on Jalen Ramsey as he's someone that um, continues to be compared to Minka for whatever reason. A lot of people compare Jalen Ramsey to Minka. I don't really think that's a fair comparison. And I'll get into why later on in the video. Um, but first off, we need to look at Minka Fitzpatrick's data compared to free safeties, which is where he compares most favorably. Uh, he had a 53.33 solo tackle market share score, a 93.74 interception market share score, and a 92.83 pass deflection market share score. Um, the only issue that he really has is his solo tackle market share. Uh, for whatever reason, Minka Fitzpatrick has never been the greatest when it came to solo tackle data when he played at Alabama, but he was very good in terms of interception data and pass deflection data. And those seem to be the big hallmarks of free safeties. Most great free safeties are very good when it comes to um, interception market share and when it comes to pass deflection market share. Um, so again, when it comes to Minka, definitely pretty good when it comes to interception data and, and pass deflection data, not so much when it comes to solo tackle data. Uh, and then of course, you look at him compared to strong safeties, uh, he just doesn't really fit in here because most elite strong safeties have even higher solo tackle data. Uh, when you look at all pro strong safeties, 98.9 .9 is the high end threshold when it comes to strong safety types. Um, and 77.66 is the Pro Bowl threshold. So um, even when it comes to strong safety, strong safeties is one of those positions where interception and pass deflection data is a little bit less, but solo tackle data is a little bit more emphasized when you're talking about the high quality threshold. So Minka doesn't really fit in with the strong safeties. And nor does he really fit in with the free safeties just because of how low his solo tackle data is. And then, of course, when you look at the averages of the position, so this is basically the free safety, the average solo tackle score, the average interception score, and average pass deflection score um, for all pro and pro bowl and uh, starter level. Um, and even here, Minka just doesn't really stick out where he needs to stick out because of his solo tackle data. Um, 54.33 is not really close to the starter average at free safety. Um, nor when we look at the strong safety averages is his solo tackle data really close to the averages at the Pro Bowl level or the averages at the starter level for the most part. Um, there definitely is some potential that he could be an outlier just because of how high his interception pass deflection mark share is, um, but, it, but it definitely is one of those sort of uh, concerns is that Minka doesn't really fit the picture of a prototypical all-pro safety, let alone a prototypical Pro Bowl safety when it comes to the overall data. Which brings us to the cornerback position. Now, Minka Fitzpatrick has never played cornerback full-time in Alabama, but I decided to take his safety data and put it the cornerback data. Yes, this is a no-no. Yes, this is really not something you want to do because you're basically taking safety and putting it into the cornerback data. It's, 
it's just funny business to say the least. Uh, you, it's, you're bound to make mistakes when you do this, but I did it anyways just to prove a point about Mika Fitzpatrick. When it comes to him as a cornerback, he had a 79.98 solo tackle data score and a 64.67 pass deflection data score. Um, based on the data here, um, he pretty much hits the bottom and threshold for solo tackle data and the bottom and threshold for pass deflection data when it comes to the cornerback position, which may be why his agent, or at least Mika himself, is pushing to play the cornerback position. I can't really say why he's pushing for the cornerback position, but if you're someone who does a lot of data work and you look at him at free safety, look at him at strong safety, he just doesn't look that good, and then you put him in at cornerback, now he starts to look a little bit better. Um, so this is the this is the one thing I can say about Mika Fitzpatrick is that his data at the cornerback position, if you take his safety, what he, how he produces a safety and put it in at a cornerback, he actually looks like a potential all-pro player, which is what you want your players to look like. Uh, then, of course, when you look at uh, Jalen Ramsey's data, uh, when you look at overall solo tackle data and pass deflection data, um, had a 60.70 solo tackle data score and 75.06 pass deflection score, uh, which the one thing I will note is that even though he didn't really hit the bottom and threshold, he didn't hit it by 0 0.03. So realistically, he did kind of hit that threshold. So if he ends up becoming a multiple all pro type, he'll pretty much set the standard for that. Uh, but he was so close to begin with. So that's this is one of the things I tried to tell you is data is if you get a guy that's that close, you just kind of give it to him just because of the margin of error at the position. But um, again, this is a completely different type of guy because Jalen Ramsey had much better pass deflection data uh, and uh, solo tackle data wasn't as good. But the other thing, too, is Jalen Ramsey actually played the cornerback position um, one full season at Florida State. Uh, whereas Mika Fitzpatrick hasn't really done that in Alabama. So this is why it's not the best to kind of do these comparisons or these other sort of things because you're basically comparing one guy who has a certain set of variables to another guy who's completely different in many ways. Uh, but overall, when it comes to Mika Fitzpatrick, I think the best, when you look at his overall data, I think the best case for him is to be a free safety type. Even though solo tackle data is not exactly where he needs to be, um, even though he he does look a little bit better at cornerback, even though you're kind of doing stuff with data that realistically is not sound at all from a uh, statistical standpoint, I still feel like if you put Minka at, at free safety, that's where he's been able to do a lot of things like get interceptions, get pass deflections at the free safety spot, uh, which are things that you want from your free safety. So I think in many ways, that is the position where I think Minka fits best from us to, again this is based on paper this isn't really based on film just based on paper paper Minka just looks a lot better as a free safety than he does a strong safety than he even does a cornerback um, in many ways uh, because of his because uh, just how he overall looks as a as a uh, guy so uh, but let me know in the comment section below who do you believe or what position do you believe that Minka Fitzpatrick should ultimately play when he gets to the NFL level uh, and of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.